So this will look something like this. I've used different colored pens. I've marked them uh, with different colors. Uh, it is quite complex, but it is not beyond us, is it? As you carefully go through them, you'll be able to see the matching words that are colored, and you'll even see that they are labeled so that you can catch all the matches so that in the end you'll be able to see the patterns emerging. So we have our text chart. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 5, we find that our pegs are for, unto, unto you, you, no, what manner of, we, you. Now these uh, pegs, these umbrella phrases, they carry the definition of what manner of men we were among you. In 1 Thessalonians 1 9, we find the pegs, the umbrella phrases, for ourselves, what manner of we unto you. Now these phrases carry the phrase entering in. In 1 Thessalonians 2 1, we find the pegs for ourselves no unto you and these carry the phrase entrance in so it's starting to become clear since this example is somewhat lengthy the material is presented in another format to show the parallel pegs more clearly you can see the repeated phrases or repeated words more clearly so that you can see what they are revealing. Remember we are looking for a definition of entering in so these repeated phrases will carry the phrase entering in and they will also carry a definition for the phrase entering in. You can also see rhyme here because rhyme tends to help us settle words together, brings thoughts together, and show rhymes with no, and it's in a parallel position. So the definition. The definition of entering in can be defined as what manner of men we were, or entrance in, because the same umbrella phrases carry these three phrases together. So entering in is what manner of men we were or entrance in. So we are defining words with the pegs or the umbrella phrases using the Bible's built-in dictionary and we can recognize them because carried in the middle of our, our repeated phrases and words uh, is our mystery word, the word that we want to define, and then we'll find, repeated in a similar way, the definition for us. This method encourages you to spend time in the word. There's lots of things to spend your time on, but the tiny time that it takes to analyze a word can be taken from all the other times that we use to do all the matters that aren't really that important. It takes time to find a definition from the Bible itself. It can be used to settle all sorts of confusion, help you settle debates that you might get involved in concerning the meaning of the Word of God, and it does solve countless theological questions because you're looking at the meaning of the word as the King James Bible means that word to be taken. It always works. It is always worth time spending time in the Word of God and this method is always honoring the Word of God.
This method that we're describing here always yields an answer. We're told to look for godly edifying rather than endless genealogies which just minister more questions. And uh, we can get into all sorts of genealogies by having a quick sneak peek at the Greek in lexicons. We can get bold enough to think that we know it all and that we can buy a book somehow uh, that's going to uh, see us through. But really we're told to be involved in godly edifying, which is in love. Looking at the King James Bible itself for its own definitions. As I've said, whenever you start to use tools, at first it always seems somewhat complicated. You've got to get used to the tools. The tools have somehow got to become second nature to you. And uh, this happens through practice, repetition and rehearsal. Uh, it's like when I tell people, when we're talking about thinking skills, there are certain tools that you need to be able to think. And those tools seem clumsy at first, but once you have used them and once you're used to them, you just pick up the right tool like a carpenter. To start with, they're a bit clumsy with their tools, but after a while, uh, they just pick up the right uh, tool for the job. They don't even think about it. It's so familiar to them that they're used to it. So as we're doing our daily Bible study using pegs and umbrella phrases, we start with the first word and then we look for the reappearance elsewhere in the chapter. Or sometimes it's more than the chapter several chapters, the whole book or the whole Bible. But you mark each one and you repeat this procedure with every word. And so that's the way in which you get some patterns emerging. For instance, to study 1 John, we begin at the first word, uh, that, and locate all the usages of the word, that. Repeat the process with the other words, which was from the and beginning, and continue reading and searching this way. That which was from the beginning, 1 John 1. All right, practice one. Here's just a few of the pegs and parallelisms which define and expand our understanding of words and ideas found in the first 17 verses of 1 John. Uh, the charts that follow include a few more, but that's what we're going to be looking at it. The first 17 verses of 1 John. Practice, practice, practice. Oh yes, better than location, location, location. It's practice, repetition, practice, repetition, 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 repetition. We need to keep practicing until the phrases just pop out at us. We're going to read 1 John chapter 1, 1 to 17, and in this section, 1 to 7. Verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. Well, uh, we have three we have in that section alone. Verse 2. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, that's another we have, and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. Now we've got a couple of uh, unto in there. That which, verse 3, we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. 
And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that's the second we unto you, that your joy may be full. So you can see there are several repeating patterns in those three, four verses. Using these umbrella phrases, these parallelisms, serve a number of functions and they help our understanding in a number of ways. Firstly, as we've already seen, children expand their vocabulary in this way and here is a good example of it. In verse 1, we have, we have seen with our eyes and we have looked upon. So there we have the umbrella phrase, we have, and the definition. So, seen with our eyes means looked upon. Secondly, doctrinal parallels are established in this pattern matching. For example, the word, capped in the uh, King James Version, Jesus Christ, the word, is compared to the written word because of the umbrella phrase from the beginning in verse 1 and from the beginning in chapter 2 verse 7. And so we can build our meanings. You see that we can run a parallel with the word him. The parallel is with the father and with his son. And so we see that the Godhead is identified with the masculine gender and not the neuter gender of the New Age movement. You see uh, chapter 1 verse 3, fellowship is with the Father and with his Son Jesus Christ. And in chapter 1 verse 6, fellowship with him. Distinct parallel of phrases showing us just who the him is. How should we walk in the light? As Jesus Christ walked in the light? Or is it something like dancing in the light? Like New Age authors, modern versions. No, we should walk as he walked. You can see verse 7. Walk is the peg. In the light is the definition. In, verse, in chapter 2, verse 6. Walk is the peg. Even as he walked is the definition. So we walk in the light as he walked in the light. Thirdly, we can define special words like propitiation. And the pegs that we're using include the first letters of some words. So the peg in this case is and, f, sin, that's found in uh, chapter 1 verse 7, and f, sins, found in chapter 2, 2. So we see that the definition, here's the propitiation of our sins, is carried as the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. From all sin. So propitiation means to be cleansed, cleansed from sin. Okay. Once pegs are used to identify parallel verses or sentences, phrases, there are several conceptual parallels found. Now we presented this uh, information in a slightly different way. You'll see verse, peg, who, did what. So, chapter 1, verse 7, the peg is and, who, the blood of Jesus Christ his son, did what, cleanseth us from all sin. In chapter 2, verse 2, we have the peg and, who, he, did what is the propitiation for our sins. And so you can see the pegs clearly defining the meaning of the word and what a cleansing it is. The so-called archaic words, and in this case the word shoe or show, defined uh, in three different words. Show is spelt the old way. Verse 2 unto you show. Verse 2, unto manifested. Verse 3, we unto you declare. Verse 4, 
we unto you write. Verse 5, we unto you declare. So there you've got that word clearly shown as manifested, declare, write unto you. God sees us as little children, except you become as little children. In chapter 2, verse 1, I write unto you, my little children. In verse 7, I write unto you, brethren. So, we're brethren, and we're little children. Okay, it's time for another break. Let's break up, and if you're working on your workbooks, then you can continue in them. Have a good break. <laughs> 